Hello, my name is Lieutenant Colonel Deidre Tahan, and I'm the Technology Lead for the Performance Triad. I'm also the Deputy Director for the Telemedicine and Advanced Technology Research Center. Today we're talking about the Stand Up Day for Health, and my topic is how technology can be used to help advance the health of your patients. So what I'd like to do is start off with an introduction and try to kind of get you to think about how technology may be beneficial for your practice, then provide some examples of technology that are currently on the market that can be beneficial for your patients, and then wrap it all up. Have you ever thought about how people are using their smartphones to access health information? Well, currently about 50% of smartphone users are using their smartphone to gather health information. And one out of five actually have one health app on their smartphone, and typically they like to download activity and nutrition related apps. If you look at how that actually impacts behavior change and actually impacts health goals, um, one research currently looked at the combination of podcasts with daily health tweets being sent to the individual and then asking the individual to post a daily health tweet about how they're doing and achieving their goal. And what they found is that those that consecutively um, were using the tweets um, to actually um, tell the folks how they were doing were losing more weight. And the average actually was about for every 10 tweets, they lost 0.5% of their body weight. And they didn't have to share stuff about their body weight. They just had to share things that they were excited about. Like today I had yogurt and an orange for breakfast, or I passed up the donut today, or I passed up on dessert today, and things that they were proud of. And that um, was very beneficial in decreasing their weight. So if you look at the hurdles for health and how we actually create and sustain changes for health, one of the number one barriers is the knowledge to be able to actually track activity, nutrition, and sleep. How much calories in, how much calories out, and what's that sleep quantity? And so these digital tools that actually have food and exercise and sleep diaries incorporated into them are very easy to actually decrease that knowledge barrier. The other barrier is actually how to plan a good program. And a lot of the technologies now come with meal and exercise planners to, um, to look over time. Setting goals, realistic, smart goals, and tracking that progress is much easier with technology because the technology can graph out the answers, give a nice visual display, make that interactive, so as they track their progress, they actually are engaged in that a little bit more than pen and paper would allow. But the number one barrier is obviously time. And the new biosensors that are hitting the market to actually help you track activity, nutrition, sleep are decreasing that time barrier. And then some of the additional support that technology brings in is the social support that as people download similar apps and they join those communities, they actually get encouragement and, and engagement through those individuals that are having similar goals. And then incentives, a lot of these technology solutions provide points, badges, and competitions and awards to actually help create and sustain that behavioral health change. The first kind of technology tool that I'd like to talk to you about is a brand new tool coming out of CSF2, or Comprehensive Soldier and Family and Fitness. It's called Army Fit. And its goal is to help our soldiers and our family members and our beneficiaries live better through connecting through social media to succeed in their health goals. This starts with the new GAT 2.0, or the Global Assessment Tool. The GAT previously measured social, family, spiritual, and emotional health. It's now added a physical domain to the GAT. And in addition to the, um, the physical domain, it actually now calculates your real age compared to your chronological age. So you can see how well your health is doing in keeping up either are you older or are you younger than your chronological age. Once you've done that self-assessment, you have a home page, just like you would on a, a social media site, which you enter your basic information, which includes your zip code. By entering your zip code, it actually lets you know what base um, and installation facilities are around you to help meet your health goals. And then your home page allows you to connect with others and get information pushed to you based on your needs that were established during the GAT 2.0. At the end of taking the GAT 2.0, you actually get suggested experts that you might want to follow or suggested topics, um, just like you would on a social media site. But then you can also go out and, and like 
um, other experts and topics based on your personal interests. In this way, they push the data to you instead of you having to go out and search and pull that data in. It also has a lot of electronic resources that soldiers can access in their families. Um, they have thousands of health-related question and answers where it's very interactive and they can find the question that they have and find the answers from multiple health experts on that. They actually have the ability to log your activity and track progress over time just like the um, personal readiness devices are doing. And they have competitions where you can gain points, earn badges, and compete with friends to help achieve your health goals. The second resource I want to tell you about today is the Human Performance Resource Center, or HPRC Online. And it provides a translation of evidence into practice through educating our patients, our soldiers, and their family members on optimal fitness to include physical, spiritual, mental fitness. Some of the key parameters on this that I like to point out is Operation Supplement Safety, which goes over the pros and cons of the, of the different supplements on the market right now. And as a physical therapist, I like movement of the day, which highlights a different exercise each day for the soldiers to try out. What has really made a difference in being able to enhance activity, nutrition, and sleep through technology is the new personal readiness devices that are on the market. There's many personal readiness devices on the market. Some just do activity, some do activity nutrition, some do all three activity nutrition and sleep. And they can be as simple as a band that goes around your wrist or it can be incorporated into a watch um, to be able to help you minimize that burden of actually having to track some of these variables over time. And what they do is they interact these biosensors with web and mobile applications to provide that data to you in a very interactive fashion. And what you'll notice on these web and mobile applications is that it allows you to track it based on your personal goal and track your progress. It sends you reminders. It interacts with the social community. And it allows you to decide really kind of what level of data you want to look at to best meet your individual needs. The third application I want to show you today is a brand new application called CBTI Coach, or Cognitive Behavioral Therapy for Insomnia Coach. And it was recently developed through a great collaboration of academia and government um, through the National, National Center of PTSD, the VA, and T2, Stanford University, and the University of Pennsylvania. Some of the tools that it has on there is called My Sleep. Under the My Sleep screen, you can look at your sleep diary. You can update your sleep prescription. You can take a, a short interactive quiz to determine if you need more sleep. And then it gives an assessment tool that uses validated tools to track your progress over time. Under the sleep diary, it actually has five questions you answer that actually tracks how you're doing each night. And then that gets entered into a system so that you can track your progress over time. It allows you to update your sleep prescription by setting um, sleep times and wake times. And then the I need more sleep tool actually helps integrate with that so that you can actually change that and increase so you can get that seven to eight hours of sleep as, as required. Some of the assessment and tools on there, they actually have a lot of self-assessments on there to let you know how you're doing. Um, it provides a result history that you can actually, as a provider, have the patient show you their results and track how they're doing over time. And to schedule reminders, it actually has when you want to schedule the assessment. So if you want them to take these measurements every week, you can put in a reminder so they do that. Some of the tools on here that are great is how to create new sleep habits to actually foster better quality and quantity of sleep tools on how to quiet your mind so that you can actually relax faster and get to sleep quicker. And once you've actually met your sleep goals, there's actually tools to actually prevent relapse um, or prevent a, a loss of sleep over time. Some of those sleep habits are shown in the far right column. There's also a lot of reference material on here for our patients on teaching them how to learn more about sleep. And the fourth app I want to kind of show you today is called the Army Health App. And this was actually created over a 10-year um, period with Pennington Biomedical Research Center, the U.S. Army Medical Research and Materiel Command, the U.S. Army Institute of Environmental Medicine, Military Operational Medicine Research Program, and the Telemedicine and Advanced Technology Research Center. You, the Health App 
actually was designed to help improve performance, readiness, weight loss, fitness results, and the overall health of our military families. You join the system through a system called Jump Start. Once you're in the system, it has a meal plan, which is a very interactive tool. It actually has one of the largest food databases out there to include the food, food database for all the military rations. It also gives you the ability to add food that you personally like to eat so that you can customize the food library based on uh, what you choose to eat at home. It has a fitness plan, which is an interactive tool that allows you not only to track the fitness that you're currently doing, but it'll actually give you an exercise program, if you like, based on your current fitness levels. Um, and those are also based on the American College of Sports Medicine guidelines. For those in the service, it actually, once you put in your PT test scores and the next date of your PT test, it'll actually augment and kind of facilitate a program to help you reach your physical fitness test score goals. It then interacts all this with a calendar to make it easier for an individual to track their health goals over time and makes it interactive. And the health app overall will help with both the nutrition and the activity um, goals. So in regards to the performance triad, what we're doing with technology for the performance triad is a three-phase approach. The foundation of what we're doing is using Comprehensive Soldier Family and Fitness's new Army Fit site to provide a push-pull system for soldiers to get data that's appropriate for their needs. We're augmenting that with a lot of web and smartphone applications so that we can individualize the, the program to the individual's goals. And then we're augmenting that to help decrease that barrier of time by giving them a biosensor, a personal readiness device that will actually help track activity, nutrition, um, and sleep. So my question for you all is are you prescribing apps? Recently on Rock Center with Brian Williams, Eric Topol was interviewed and he basically said, these days I'm actually prescribing a lot more apps than I am medications. This is an amazing interview and if you wanna learn more about how technology can advance and change healthcare, I recommend that you watch the video. The link for the video is shown on this uh, slide. So in closing, what I want to just kind of challenge is the idea that knowledge is power. And, and really, knowledge plus action is power. And for a lot of our patients, it's not just knowing that they need to have better activity, nutrition, sleep. They need tools to help them get over those barriers that they're having to actually put them into an action state to reach their goals. And so today, what I hoped I covered was just a couple of those um, technology tools to help your patients overcome those hurdles, overcome those barriers, so they can reach their health goals and live a healthier life. Thank you very much.